Good morning, or afternoon, or evening, folks, whatever time it is for you. We're continuing on with chapter 13 of Duff, Elements of New Testament Greek, and this video is all about one single word. We're going to have a little video on one word, and that word is translated into English as things like all or every. Um, but because it's Greek, you can't just learn a word. You have to learn a whole chart that goes with it. So let me rewind and begin way back in the beginning when we started to learn about nouns. In, now in chapter 13, you've learned about all the different kinds of nouns in Greek, and that's so exciting. No more new noun charts. You've got them all. And you have three different declensions of nouns in Greek. So long ago in the fall, you learned the second declension of nouns. That's the first thing you learned. And those were masculine nouns like logos, and they were neuter nouns like ergon. And then you learned the consistent endings. All the nouns that are like logos are masculine. All the nouns that are like ergon are neuter. And then secondly, moving along, we also learned some feminine nouns, and we called those our first declension nouns. And there were three kinds of them. There were fe feminine nouns that declined like arche, and like hemera, and like doxa. So basically, the first two declensions of nouns we learned were, were just based on different endings depending on gender. We learned masculine, um, we learned neuter, then we learned the three kinds of feminines, and th there were just a couple of masculine nouns that snuck their way in to the first declension, like prophetes. <clears throat> it's actually masculine, but it too follows the first declension. And then just last week, we finally learned the final declension, which is the third declension. And what we found out about that declension was that it's not based on gender. Um, it's based on, well, the endings all look the same and it does it. It's not the gender that tells you how to decline the noun. Instead, it's based on stem, finding the stem, not in the nominative, because the nominatives can all be crazy and weird, but finding the stem in the another case, such as the genitive, and then extrapolating from that what the ending should be. So after that, you knew all the different kinds of nouns in Greek, and you're done. First, second, and third declension. So going along with nouns are adjectives. Why do I say that? Why do, why do adjectives go along with nouns in Greek? Well, it's because if you recall, like many other languages, adjectives and nouns in Greek must match each other in terms of their gender, case, and number. For example, if coffee cup is, a, let's say, a feminine noun in Greek, then this is a sing, single coffee cup, so a coffee cup is a feminine noun. Then if I want to say a red coffee cup, the word red also, I have to use the ending that's feminine and singular as well, so I could match. And adjectives also have declensions. They also follow certain endings, just like nouns in Greek. So, and they can be first or second or third declension. So even if coffee cup in Greek is, say, a uh, first declension set of endings, if the adjective red has a second declension set of endings, it's got to keep those. as So the endings might not look the same, but I've got to use the feminine version um, of red and I've got to use the singular version of red because I've got my feminine singular coffee cup. So adjectives, the endings of adjectives, the cases and number and gender of adjectives much match the must match the noun they're describing in Greek. Why am I saying all this to teach you about one word? It's because that word is an adjective that I could never teach you until now because you had to know the third declension before learning this adjective. And this adjective is called, well, I call it pass, passa, pan. 
And really it's just the word pass, which means all or every. But I say pass, pass a pan so that I can picture the whole chart in my head. We call pass, pass a pan an adjective that has a hybrid declension. So what do I mean by that? In fact, it has a 313 declension because in the masculine and in the neuter, it follows the third declension, but in the feminine, it follows the first declension. So I'm gonna show you how that looks. It's also on page 148 in your book. Have a look at this chart. Have a look at the masculine and neuter. They have a little three beside them. And have a look at the feminine. It has a number one. But it's all the same word. It's all a word that translates into English as all or every or whole. So, what do I have to say about that? Um, I know. Let's let's try a practice sentence for pass pass a pan. So have a look again at the. What do you what do you see about these endings? You see that in the neuter, the nominative and the accusative are the same, just like you've seen in other nouns and adjectives that are neuter. You see in the masculine that it's following third declension endings, which we just learned last week. You see that in the feminine, it's not following third declension. It's almost like it is a third declension adjective that just really wishes it could have different feminine endings. And so there aren't any special feminine third declension endings, so it reaches over and borrows the endings from the first declension. So there you have it. Now let's try a sentence together. Here's a sentence that has two examples of this word in it, so we can really practice. Have a look at this on your own. Try and read it on your own. So it says, pas ethalmasen dia penta ha epoye. Pas ethalmasen dia penta ha epoye. So while you're thinking about that, I'll show you this chart again. And we've got pass in there and we've got penta in there. So find pass and penta on this chart. Looks like pass is up at the top of the masculine. And looks like penta, we've got a couple of options here because it looks like it's neuter. So it could be nominative plural or it could be accusative plural. So let's look at our sentence again. And now you can pause it and work it out if you want. Uh, but let's look at the translation I've got here. So for a translation, can you see? I don't even know if I can see. For a translation, we've got, everyone was amazed because of all the things that he or she was doing. So, pass, which is in the masculine singular, we couldn't really translate it into English as all because it's singular. So how can we think of a word that means that's sort of, it's not neuter, so we know it's more about human beings than about items, and it means all, except it's singular. Well, one way to do that is to say everyone. So it stays singular, everyone. So there we have everyone, and then we have this verb here, Ethalmasen. Turns out it comes from thalmazo, 
I am amazed. But foul masso, look at what's happened to it. It's got an epsilon augment here. And instead of a zeta, it's got a sigma here. So stigma, sigma at the end of the stem, epsilon augment, that tells us aorist. So instead of am amazed, it's was amazed. And this ending tells us that it's third person. So he, she, or it was amazed. There we go. Everyone was amazed. And then we have dia. Now dia can mean different things, whether it's followed by the accusative or the genitive. It can mean because of, if it's followed by the accusative, and it can mean through, if it's followed by the genitive. And here we have panta, and we looked at our chart and we saw that it could either be um, nominative plural or accusative plural. But if it's followed by dia, dia doesn't take the nominative, so that narrows down this to say that this is the accusative. So panta is in the accusative, that means that this is the dia that takes the accusative, so we know it means because of. So everyone was amazed because of, and then how do we translate panta? Well, it's neuter, um, and it means all or every. So because it's neuter, we can actually translate it as an item or a thing. It, it's not referring to a person. So I've got the translation, all the things. There is no definite article there in that sentence in Greek, but I just thought it sounded not, it sounded too weird if I would just say all things that he or she was doing. Everyone was amazed because of all things that he or she was doing. Doesn't make great English, so I added in that case, the, de the definite article just in English, but I put it in parentheses, and that's what I would like to see on your exam too. If you need to add a word in English to make it make sense in English, but it's not there in the Greek, just put it in parentheses and I'll know that's what you're doing. And so everyone was amazed because of all the things. Ha is our relative pronoun, and it can mean that or which. So all the things that or which Epoie, eh, a, epoie. Looks like that is poieo, this verb we know that means make or do, except it's got an augment, but it's not got a sigma in the stem, so it's not aorist, so just an augment with this ending looks like that's imperfect. So the sentence reads, everyone was amazed because of all the things that she or he was doing. So now you see how the word all can kind of work in a sentence and how the endings really do matter um, and how you almost, you very rarely actually just translate it as all. You have to work out like, is it neuter? So is it about a thing? Is it everything? Is it plural or singular? Is it all things or everything? Um, if it's a person, is it all people or is it singular? So you have to say everyone, um, all that kind of thing. So there's an example of using pass, passa, and pan in a sentence. Um, on page 149 of your textbook, there's a practice section. So it's parsing different occasions of pass, passa, pan, which you can just look at this chart and do it while finding them on the chart. And then afterwards, keep doing it until you can do it without looking at the chart. And there are also four little translations, and we've done one of them together, and the answers are in the back. So practice using pass, passa, and pan until you can translate them on your own. And one reason why you might think, oh, well, there's only really one adjective that looks like this, and it's already endings we know, so this isn't very important at all. But in fact, it is quite important because we are going to blast into, for chapter 14, the rest of our participles. And once we finish chapter 14, like so far we've only done masculine nominative participles, but those there are many, many other forms of participles, and they actually look a lot like pass, pass, a pan in their endings. And so 
do focus on getting the past passive pan endings because they're going to serve you well in the next chapter. And let me tell you that once we pass chapter 14 and you have broken into all the participles, you are totally now ready to crack open a Greek New Testament and start with your glossary or lexicon trying it out on your own. Because once you have all the participles that are so common in the New Testament, um, you have all the noun declensions, uh, you have most of the verb forms or the most important ones, you're, you're ready, like this is it. You can start trying looking at the Greek New Testament on your own, which was our whole goal. And I'm very, very proud of you. And you're all doing great. Okay, this ends our video on a single word, pass. See you next time.